I've been thinking about bicycling across America, coast to coast, for 14 years. And last summer, I finally went for it. Day 63. So windy. The plan. The plan is simple. Safely bicycle from Portland to Portland. I then realized Portland, Oregon isn't on the coast, so I extended the trip by a day. For the bike, I took my three-speed hybrid. Sure, it struggles going up hills. Third day in a row walking. I'm just, I'm just walking. But this is the only bike I've had since college. I can't imagine taking any other bicycle on this adventure. I started getting serious about this goal a few years ago. I had done a couple bicycle tours, I bought a cheap stationary bike to train on, and I continually saved up money for the trip. Then, with about a month to go, I did a solo bike ride going 300 miles from Pittsburgh to DC. Finally, the actual day arrived, and I packed my bags and bicycle into a rental car and headed to Portland, Maine. Maine, day one. I woke up, made my way down to the water, and started bicycling. And before I knew it, the day was over. I bicycled 76 miles, my bicycle didn't break down, and I didn't get hit by a vehicle. I thought to myself, this might actually be okay. The next few days of traveling through New England went smooth. While there were challenges like hills, knee pain, and rain, the excitement of the trip made those problems seem trivial. As for the path I took, I quickly linked up to the Adventure Cycling's Northern Tier route, which helped me navigate around busier roads. For the most part, my days included getting up and ready, bicycling, walking up hills, and layers and layers of sunscreens. When preparing for this trip, I decided to skip camping and instead splurge on motels, hotels, cabins, and Airbnbs. So for the evening, I checked into my room, showered, ate dinner, and prepped for the next day. New York. On day five, I crossed into New York and started traveling down the Empire State Trail. Riding on the Erie Canal Trail was a great experience. To be able to travel mostly off-road, away from cars, from Albany all the way to Buffalo was a luxury. But of course, all good things must come to an end, and after Buffalo, I hopped back on the road and started making my way to the Midwest. Ohio. On day 14, I briefly passed through Pennsylvania and made it to Ohio. The start of the Midwest was great. There were only a few rainy days, the hills were minimal, and I was able to visit friends and family during this section. I mean, sure, things did go wrong. A spoke on my back wheel broke. I went to urgent care for my hand after hitting a sidewalk and falling off my bike. And on top of all that, by this point, I've collided with and been stung by two different bees on two separate occasions. Like, how does that happen? Of course, even with all these things happening, so far, it was easy to keep things in perspective. Here I am, in the middle of a work week, bicycling from town to town. I am finally doing the thing I've been thinking about doing for all these years. How cool is that? Iowa. On day 29, I bicycled into Iowa. A few days prior, I decided to cut through Iowa and Nebraska instead of going further north on the Northern Tier route. My thinking was cutting through might be shorter mileage, and since it was already September, I was worried about the colder weather. However, things took a turn that I wasn't expecting. I don't know exactly when it started, but somewhere in Iowa, about a month into my trip, I was beginning to feel burnt out. During this time, I'm still going through the motions. I'm getting up and ready, I'm bicycling 40 to 70 miles a day, and I'm spending the evenings planning out my route. But mentally, the days were exhausting and I didn't see the point of the trip anymore. It sounds ridiculous now, but at the time, I was so in my head, I was ready to give up on the trip. Luckily though, things did get better. I'm not sure exactly what got me out of the spiral, but a few things did help. For one, I realized I still really wanted this goal. Sure, I could quit now, but in a year or two, I know I'll be back here again if I stop. So if that's the case, then quitting would just be more painful than continuing on. 
Additionally, I started reaching out to friends and family more often. Being able to talk on the phone in the evenings about trivial life events or hearing their encouragements definitely put me in a better mood. And finally, overall, I started to gain perspective. Sure, dirt roads and finding my own way through Iowa was taking a toll, but I'm still making progress. So eventually, by the time I was halfway through Nebraska, my burnout improved. My commitment to finishing this trip was back on track. Missouri River. Wyoming. On day 45, I coasted into Wyoming. Some days were still more difficult than others, but regardless of riding conditions or internal motivation, bicycling through Wyoming was another highlight of the trip. Some days that really stuck out to me include the day that 20 mile per hour tailwinds helped me go 76 miles in a little over five hours. Or there was the day that I spent eight hours walking and biking up 7,000 feet to get past Bighorn National Forest. And then there was the two days I spent navigating through Yellowstone, dodging buses and tourists. Living it up in Montana. Idaho. Montana came and went, and on day 62, I made it to Idaho. Idaho really felt like a turning point. As far as landscape, Montana felt cold and empty, but the route I took through Idaho was overwhelmingly warm and green. The minimal traffic, the nice winding roads, and the beautiful scenery made this section of the trip really enjoyable. I will say, throughout most of the trip, I tried to avoid lingering on how far I still had to go. Focusing on all the miles and days ahead would have easily got me overwhelmed. So I tried only thinking in day-to-day -day or town-to-town -town chunks. But this mindset, this all changed in Idaho. With just a few more days left, the Pacific Coast finally seemed within reach. Washington and Oregon. On day 65, I made it to Washington. The last seven days traveling between Washington and Oregon along the Columbia River was a whirlwind. There were still windy days, steep hills, and mistakes being made. This is what core planning looks like. But the end was finally near. Eventually, I made it to Portland, Oregon, which meant only one more day was between me and the Pacific Coast. The last day was 87 miles. I left at 8 a.m., and shortly after sunset, I made it to the beach in Seaside, Oregon. Being at the water felt surreal. I had started the trip on the coast of Maine, and now here I am on the Pacific Coast. There. That's it. That, that was a little crazy. I'm in Seaside, Oregon, and I'm done with my ride. I gotta get a job now.